Articular Cartilage Repair, Wikipedia Article Audio The aim of an articular cartilage repair treatment is to restore the surface of an articular joint s hyaline cartilage. Over the last decades, surgeons and researchers have been working hard to elaborate surgical cartilage repair interventions. Though these solutions do not perfectly restore articular cartilage, some of the latest technologies start to bring very promising results in repairing cartilage from traumatic injuries or chondropathies. These treatments are especially targeted by patients who suffer from articular cartilage damage. They provide pain relief while at the same time slowing down the progression of damage or considerably delaying joint replacement surgery. Articular cartilage repair treatments help patients to return to their original lifestyle, regaining mobility, going back to work and even practicing sports again. Though the different articular cartilage procedures differ in the used technologies and surgical techniques, they all share the aim to repair articular cartilage whilst keeping options open for alternative treatments in the future. Broadly taken, there are five major types of articular cartilage repair. Different Articular Cartilage Repair Procedures Arthroscopic Lavage Slash Debridement Arthroscopic lavage is a cleaning up procedure of the knee joint. This short-term solution is not considered an articular cartilage repair procedure but rather a palliative treatment to reduce pain, mechanical restriction, and inflammation. Lavage focuses on removing degenerative articular cartilage flaps and fibrous tissue. The main target group are patients with very small defects of the articular cartilage. Marrow stimulating techniques attempt to solve articular cartilage damage through an arthroscopic procedure. Firstly, damaged cartilage is drilled or punched until the underlying bone is exposed. By doing this, the subchondral bone is perforated to generate a blood clot within the defect. Studies, however, have shown that marrow stimulation techniques often have insufficiently filled the chondral defect and the repair material is often fibrocartilage. The blood clot takes about eight weeks to become fibrous tissue and it takes four months to become fibrocartilage. This has implications for the rehabilitation. Further on, Chances are high that after only one or two years of the surgery symptoms start to return as the fibrocartilage wears away, forcing the patient to re-engage in articular cartilage repair. This is not always the case and microfracture surgery is therefore considered to be an intermediate step. An evolvement of the microfracture technique is the implantation of a collagen membrane onto the site of the microfracture to protect and stabilize the blood clot and to enhance the chondrogenic differentiation of the MSCs. This technique is known as AMIC and was first published in 2003. A 2011 study reports histologically confirmed hyaline cartilage regrowth in a five patient case series two with grade 4 bipolar or kissing lesions in the knee. The successful protocol involves arthroscopic microdrilling slash microfracture surgery followed by postoperative injections of autologous peripheral blood progenitor cells and hyaluronic acid. PBPCs are a blood product containing mesenchymal stem cells and is obtained by mobilizing the stem cells into the peripheral blood. Kai Yong Sa and his team propose that the microdrilling surgery creates a blood clot scaffold on which injected PBPCs can be recruited and enhance chondrogenesis at the site of the contained lesion. They explain that the significance of this cartilage regeneration protocol is that it is successful in patients with historically difficult to treat grade 4 bipolar or bone-on-bone -bone osteochondral lesions. Marrow Stimulation Techniques Sa and his team are currently conducting a larger randomized trial and working towards beginning a multi-center study. 
the work of the Malaysian research team is gaining international attention. This technique slash repair requires transplant sections of bone and cartilage. First, the damaged section of bone and cartilage is removed from the joint. Then a new healthy dowel of bone with its cartilage covering is punched out of the same joint and replanted into the hole left from removing the old damaged bone and cartilage. The healthy bone and cartilage are taken from areas of low stress in the joint so as to prevent weakening the joint. Depending on the severity and overall size of the damage multiple plugs or dowels may be required to adequately repair the joint which becomes difficult for osteochondral autografts. The clinical results may deteriorate over time. Marrow stimulation augmented with peripheral blood stem cells. For osteochondral allografts the plugs are taken from deceased donors. This has the advantage that more osteochondral tissue is available and larger damages can be repaired using either the plug technique or by hand carving larger grafts. There are, however, worries on the histocompatibility, though no rejection drugs are required and infection has been shown to be lesser than that of a total knee or hip. Osteochondral allografting using donor cartilage has been used most historically in knees, but is also emerging in hips, ankles, shoulders, and elbows. Patients are typically younger than 55, with BMI below 35, and have a desire to maintain a higher activity level that traditional joint replacements would not allow. Advances in tissue preservation and surgical technique are quickly growing this surgery in popularity. Aiming to obtain the best possible results, scientists have striven to replace damaged articular cartilage with healthy articular cartilage. Previous repair procedures, however, always generated fibrocartilage or, at best, a combination of hyaline and fibrocartilage repair tissue. Autologous chondrocyte implantation procedures are cell-based repairs that aim to achieve a repair consisting of healthy articular cartilage. ACI articular cartilage repair procedures take place in three stages. First, cartilage cells are extracted arthroscopically from the patient's healthy articular cartilage that is located in a non-load bearing area of either the intercondylar notch or the superior ridge of the femoral condyles then these extracted cells are transferred to an in vitro environment in specialized laboratories where they grow and replicate for approximately four to six weeks until their population has increased to a sufficient amount Finally, the patient undergoes a second surgery where the in vitro chondrocytes are applied to the damaged area. In this procedure, chondrocytes are injected and applied to the damaged area in combination with either a membrane or a matrix structure. These transplanted cells thrive in their new environment, forming new articular cartilage. Osteochondral autografts and allografts for years, the concept of harvesting stem cells and re-implanting them into one's own body to regenerate organs and tissues has been embraced and researched in animal models. In particular, mesenchymal stem cells have been shown in animal models to regenerate cartilage. Recently, there has been a published case report of decrease in knee pain in a single individual using autologous mesenchymal stem cells. An advantage to this approach is that a person's own stem cells are used, avoiding transmission of genetic diseases. It is also minimally invasive, minimally painful, and has a very short recovery period. This alternative to the current available treatments was shown not to cause cancer in patients who were followed for three years after the procedure. Cell-based repairs See also autologous mesenchymal stem cell transplant for cartilage growth. Autologous mesenchymal stem cell transplant 
Rehabilitation following any articular cartilage repair procedure is paramount for the success of any articular cartilage resurfacing technique. The rehabilitation is often long and demanding. The main reason is that it takes a long time for the cartilage cells to adapt and mature into repair tissue. Cartilage is a slow adapting substance. Where a muscle takes approximately 35 weeks to fully adapt itself, cartilage only undergoes 75% adaptation in two years. If the rehabilitation period is too short, the cartilage repair might be put under too much stress, causing the repair to fail. New research by Robert Litchfield, September 2008 of the University of Western Ontario concluded that routinely practiced knee surgery is ineffective at reducing joint pain or improving joint function in people with osteoarthritis. The researchers did however find that arthroscopic surgery did help a minority of patients with milder symptoms, large tears, or other damage to the meniscus cartilage pads that improve the congruence between femur and tibia bones. Similarly, a 2013 Finnish study found surgery to be ineffective for knee surgery, by comparing to sham treatment. The Importance of Rehabilitation in Articular Cartilage Repair Concerns